Today I'm down at a softwood sawmiller and processor in Colac in Victoria. Uh, we're going to see how they actually grow the softwood and what they do in the processing. So let's go and have a look. Softwood timber is used throughout Australia's construction industry for a variety of purposes. While studs, posts and non-structural products like mouldings are readily available from your local timber yard, these are all produced from the same natural and renewable resource, softwood trees. The variety of softwood grown can vary depending on the local climate and the intended use of the wood. Imported softwoods are typically spruce or fir, while local plantation resources are predominantly pine. All trees in a planted crop originate from the same parents, ensuring consistency in the wood grown. While trees can be grown from seed, here we can see them being started from cuttings. These are dipped into a rooting hormone, planted in a carefully mixed soil, and then housed within a climate-controlled facility until they grow a healthy root system and a thick enough stem to move outdoors. This process can take up to six months. Once outdoors, the grower slowly reduces the amount of water and fertiliser given to each stem until a level is achieved that reflects the true characteristics of the soil in which they are to be planted. With millions of trees planted every season, this process is highly automated, allowing the grower to maintain control while operating at a very large scale. Before a stem can leave for planting, the grower checks the sample for root development and stem thickness. A well-developed sapling is likely to adapt to the new environment more readily, reducing the likelihood of wind damage. When ready, the trees are planted in rows to ensure sufficient sunlight penetration for rapid growth, amongst other reasons. At this stage, the stems are planted at quite a high density of up to 1,400 trees per hectare, requiring maintenance and regular checks to ensure the health of the crop, also known as a stand. As the young trees quickly grow taller, their branches also grow out, resulting in an impenetrable stand of pine needles. At this stage, the trees are pruned to improve sunlight penetration into the stand, focus the tree's energy on vertical growth, and reduce the risk of bushfires by modifying the fuel zone along the boundaries of the plantation. This is a routine operation. My name is Mark Howe, and I'm the resources manager for AKD Softwoods. As the resources manager at AKD, my role is to manage the supply of timber to the mill at Colac. AKD is a vertically in integrated business uh, where we have uh, a sawmill on one hand and then our own plantation assets on the other hand. Uh, the plantation contributes to about 10% of the sawmill uh, intake for the year, um, of which is approximately, last year we cut about 250 hectares out of the 10,000 hectare estate. We also do a thinnings program where we're trying to improve the quality of the stand of timber over the years. Um, there'll be you know, a first, second or a third thinning before a clear fall happens. The thinning process involves the selective harvesting of trees as a means to provide more sunlight, ground nutrients and water to the highest value trees. While the stand is initially planted at a high density of up to 1,400 stems per hectare, multiple thinning stages reduces this to approximately 800 stems, 600 stems, and finally 400 stems per hectare at the time of harvesting. The trees harvested during the thinning process are not wasted, but are processed into lower value wood products, such as pallets, posts, rails, and paper. Hi, I'm Joe Foster. I'm the harvesting manager at AKD. In harvesting, we're heavily regulated uh, with code of practice and uh, other certification bodies. So once we get to the clear fell harvest, uh, which can be anywhere between 28 to 35 years old, the plantation behind me is currently 29 years old and it'll be harvested in the next few years. Once harvesting is complete, we leave as much residue on the ground as possible. Uh, we, this site will have a chopper roller run over it and that will break down all the small branches, leaving the green nutrients behind on the ground. So this keeps nutrients on site as well as um, retaining moisture in the soil. Some of the technology that we employ at AKD is the use of drones. Uh, we will do a, a flyover assessment 
of our harvest areas and we can um, do three-dimensional modelling of, of, of the site to assist our planning phases. Uh, we also use LiDAR technology uh, to assist in um, our steep slope modelling uh, where we will use different equipment for harvesting in different kinds of terrain. We use the harvesting data from the machines uh, that gets sent to a website called Sticks. Uh, this information has really opened our eyes to the data that the harvesters have been accumulating for years. So the information we receive from the harvesters is not only how much uh, cubic metres per product we've produced, but also gives us uh, information on the area we've covered while harvesting, which from uh, being office-based is a really quick, easy way of looking at where each harvester is working uh, from the day before. We're land managers, so we're, we're here to look after the, the land for a long time, so we can continue to grow these long rotation plantations. Once harvested, the logs are transferred to the sawmill, where they can be processed into the wide range of wood products we know and love. This is a highly automated process, driven to achieve high levels of efficiency and generate as little waste as possible. Every log is different and needs to be scanned to determine their strength, structure and any internal defects before cutting. Once scanned, the saws automatically adjust to ensure the maximum possible yield of high value products from the log. Offcuts don't go to waste, but are instead used in other, lower value products. The log is cut into section sizes a little bigger than the size of the product on the shelf. This extra thickness will be removed during the finishing stage. While the sections now look similar to what you can buy off the shelf, there is still a lot of testing, sorting and finishing to go. Once scanned for moisture content and stiffness, the sections are automatically sorted into bins of like sizing and then packed together with thin timber packers separating each layer. These sections can now go through a highly efficient kiln drying process in which their moisture content will be reduced from approximately 20% down to approximately 12%. Once dried and cooled, the packs are unloaded into the dry mill where the sections are finished and checked before packing for distribution. The dry sections are planed on all four sides to give them a smooth surface before machine stress grading and stamping with their final strength. This process is what gives the timber the MGP, or machine graded pine, grade of either 10, 12 or 15. Once checked for the last time, packs are wrapped with weather protection and distributed to projects all around Australia. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to click like below and don't forget to subscribe to be the first to hear of future videos. If you're interested to learn more about wood, trees and the forest learning program, make sure to visit the website at www.forestlearning.edu.au. See you next time.